Welcome to Talent on Tap. We are very excited to welcome Ellen Shook, who is Accenture's CHRO to our show. We recently sat down with her at LinkedIn's annual Talent Connect conference in Las Vegas. And Ellen, if you haven't seen her speak before, she's an amazing thought leader. She has done some amazing things in terms of gender and pay and practice, in terms of the talent ecosystem. Just to hear Ellen talk is inspiring. So welcome, Ellen. We hope you enjoy the show. So let's talk about some of the things that you are passionate about, that we are both passionate about in terms of bringing the human back into the workplace. And, you know, for this audience, you know, bringing it to a very practical statement in terms of what does that look like? How do you know when you're successful? And if you're recruiting talent and you're engaging with that talent, how do you make sure that humanity piece is there, especially in the digital workforce where everyone's distributed? I mean, you might have 50,000, I think, of employees in the U.S., the rest of your 385,000 employees are outside the U.S. So you've got a big challenge. Yeah, we do. We do. But I think the most important thing when I think about uh, the people of Accenture is that it really has nothing to do with the 385,000 people. It's really about each individual and what they aspire to do and really ensuring that our people can work at the intersection of their strengths and their passions. Yeah, you talk about personalization a yeah. lot. Yeah. And thinking about scale and personalization, people say, what? You're like, how does that work? Like, if you're tapping talent and you're looking at them and you're like, I'm going to leverage a liquid workforce, people that can ebb and flow in your space, how do you make that personal? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, we're taking a lot of lessons from consumer companies because mm -hmm. really our people are living in a very hyper-personalized world right now. You know, the, the consumer brands that they're interacting with can really personalize the experience for each one of their customers. So we're really learning on how to create experiences that are meeting, meaningful from each person from there because the lines are blurring between people's personal and professional lives. Yes. And so they want the same type of experience at work that they're getting outside of work. So we really are creating uh, experiences for our people one individual at a time. On, on, on that, that question, uh, you have lots of interesting stuff to dig into there. One is is on uh, leadership and leadership alignment. So, sure. so that making sure there's this focus on the human. What what steps are you taking to ensure that uh, the leadership of the company and sort of are, are modeling the right behavior? And, and at, gosh, at the amazing scale that you're at, how do yeah. how does that how do you do that programmatically? Well, first and foremost, we are a talent led business, so we don't have any products to sell. We mm -hmm. just have our people. So when you're a talent-led business, your people are everything. And it is really a, the most significant role of, of our leaders to grow our people. Because when we grow our people, we grow our business. And so it's, it's really part of our DNA. But we've had to learn some things as we've kind of gone through this journey. First and foremost, it's no longer about managing people, mm -hmm. right? You, if you hire smart people... You have to let them do what they do and do it well. And your responsibility is to really unlock the human potential as a leader. And so it's really creating the environment where our leaders can coach for performance rather than manage performance. Mm -hmm. So we have made a very significant investment to pivot our leaders from managing our people to coaching our people for performance. And that that has been um, part, a significant part of the journey. And any tips, any just like practical tips that you, you would impart on like anyone who's out there watching this is, hey, I wanna be a better coach. Any any one or two nuggets you yeah. think? If, if you're an HR professional mm -hmm. or leading a large organization, I would not skimp on investing in building the coaching capability. Mm -hmm. It's really oh, something that you need to point. be intentional about yeah. because it doesn't necessarily come naturally to people and there's techniques to it. Mm -hmm. So really invest in uh, in building that capability. Do you think point. most people think they're good coaches and they're not? Actually... Or do you, do you think people are... Is there general self-awareness in organizations for people? Because I, I agree. I mean, we talked about you know the percentage of time you should spend coaching. Most people don't spend that amount of time. Not at all. And then you peel it back, it's like, do you actually even know the language to apply to a person to actually coach them? Is uh, But do you think the, the awareness is there in organizations? Well, like, I, they the, the way it the, they, yeah, they confuse it with management, and the way I describe it, my uh, uh, younger sister, Sue, was a diver. 
She was a competitive diver. She was a state championship diver. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And That's she cool. had a coach. You know, Mr. Albright was her coach. Uh, but he never, ever once was on a diving board. And he coached her to be the state champion diver in New York State. And so when, when I use that analogy with our leaders, you don't have to do, you don't have to have done what they're doing and you don't, you can't tell them what to do or how to do it. You really have to tap into um, their motivation and their inspiration and their talent to unlock it. And I think that's when they oh, realize that managing and coaching is, mm -hmm. are two very different things. And they become very open to it because it, it is really very inspiring uh, for our people to receive, you know, real time on demand feedback and coaching mm -hmm. yeah. because people want to do well. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. So yeah. do you now actually interview and look at leaders that are good at coaching or do you assume that you're going to always have to retrain that muscle? Like this is what it means at Accenture. This is what it means to be a coach, to give the feedback. This is what it means to receive feedback because... I know sometimes when, when someone, I won't look at them, gives me feedback, maybe I don't want to hear it, right? And he's trying to make me a better leader. Yeah. Like, do you do the, the feedback both ways? Do you do the Absolutely. teaching both ways? Absolutely. We do it individual to individual mm -hmm. both ways. But even more interestingly, it's happening at the team level. And we Ooh. started hearing this thing. We, every, every single person at Accenture has a career counselor. So not your boss, but someone that's going to be with you uh, for the long term that can see kind of consistency from project to project and help you, you know, navigate your career. Every single person. Every single person. And wow. how does that get identified? Now you just tripped my mind. Okay, wait, but let me tell you the more interesting <laughs> like, thing we were hearing. That. Our mm -hmm. people, we have 74% um, of our people are millennials. So we really listen and allow them to co-create their experience with us. And what they were telling us, they kept talking about counseling families. I'm like, Counseling what? families? What do you mean? What's a counseling family? And they really want to have an experience where the, the team that they're working with are coaching and counseling each other. And m even more than just one-on-one. -on -one. And, I, and I can see the richness the in that because they work together every single day. And together, together they achieve high performance. <laughs>